Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you are watching this presentation, good day to you. This presentation is the first among the instructional materials we will be providing to help us craft the course syllabus for the medical program of BPSU. I am Dr. Abby Jennifer Tamayo Tolentino and let me start off my presentation with a brief history and review of the medical education over the years. In 1910, Flexnerian education came about as research and science advanced during the 20th century. In line with the changes in the delivery of health care, medical education also implemented a biomedical model which emphasizes the science behind patient care. The prevailing criticism of the Flexnerian model of medical training is that we produce doctors who are excellent in uh, who are excellent in science and research, but not exactly the best in patient care. It is further claimed that doctors lack critical thinking, problem-solving skills and most especially, communication skills. These skills, which are unnecessarily developed by traditional teaching, serve as the very foundations identified in problem-based learning. That is why many medical schools shifted to PBL. The idea in PBL is that the students will be given trigger cases, which can be clinical problems, phenomena, or a story with contextual cues that will activate the prior knowledge of the learners. This is based on one important principle of learning, that is, uh, learning starts with activation of prior knowledge or what the students already know. After that, the students will have to identify the main problem in the case given to them as they engage in some sort of dialogue among the group. One student will give his idea or explanation on the problem and another student may agree or refute. If they don't agree, then it's called cognitive conflict. Cognitive conflict serve different purposes. First, Elaboration of the material being learned, which further helps in the retrieval of information. Second, determination of learning or knowledge gaps. And third, motivation for learning. As each of the students uh, find more information to support their explanation or fill in their knowledge gaps, the students develop an effective self-directed learning skills. So after the students collect relevant information, they will go back to their discussion and make conclusions based on the evidence they gathered. The major educational goals of PBL include structuring of knowledge for use in the clinical context. In biomedical model of medical training or the Flexnerian approach, since the focus is the science behind patient care, the standards require that students master the knowledge behind the discipline. But in most cases, the integration of that and how it should be applied in actual delivery of care, that is what's missing, which the PBL approach tried to fill in. The second major educational goal of PBL is to develop an effective clinical reasoning process, which can be exemplified as students undergo the seven jumps in PBL sessions. The third educational goal of PBL is to develop an effective self-directed learning skill. Since it is, it, um, it is the, students, the students are the ones who identify their learning gaps and they are also the ones who locate evidence to fill in these learning gaps, this are the very essence of self-directed learning, of self-directed learning. And the last uh, educational goal of PBL is to increase motivation for learning. But the major drawback of PBL, especially when it was implemented here in the Philippines, is that many graduates 
failed the licensure examination. Primarily because assessment referring to the PLE was not aligned with how the students were taught. So many schools reverted to the traditional way. Now, uh, PBL is being used as one of teaching learning strategies called PBL tutorials no? rather than it is used an, an, as an educational approach or model or a curriculum design. No? With many schools going back to the biomedical model, the criticisms toward it continue to exist. So, in order to produce doctors who possess communication skills and the behavior fitting of a healthcare professional, community-oriented education emerged in 1970. COE, or Community-Oriented Education, attempted to reorient care towards the needs of individuals within populations, and it provides a good framework for meeting the humanistic challenge of young students. The main goal of COE is to develop graduates who are capable and motivated to go into primary care community practice. Most medical schools implemented one way or another a community-oriented course in their medical programs. Uh, but there are, only, there are only a few institutions, particularly in the Philippines, who adapted a purely community-based medical education. Most are combination of the traditional approach with orientation towards the community. In 1980, competency-based education emerged. And the most important the most important element in CBE is the engagement and active participation of the learner in all aspects of acquiring the competency. The other element of CBE is clear evidence-based definition of learning outcomes to be demonstrated for the performance of the professional role. In competency-based education, there is also attention to the learning needs and patterns of adults. There should be provision of adequate time for the students to acquire the competency, practice it, and demonstrate it. And there is emphasis in providing a supportive learning environment. For the learners. But even with a competency based education, there remains to be a mismatch between what the employers need and what the graduates have. To address this mismatch, in 1990, OBE or outcome based education emerged. The focus in OBE is the learning outcomes, which refers to the culmination demonstration of learning. Yes, OBE is not an entirely new concept and it has been existing since 1990, but OBE in Philippines only started in 2012 with the release of CMO 46, the Policy Standard to Enhance Quality Assurance in Philippine Higher Education through an outcome-based and typology-based QA. With that, we will now focus our discussion on outcome-based education. What it is, why OBE, and how do we use OBE as an educational approach, or how do we use OBE in designing instruction. Since we are talking about OBE, first, learning outcomes. So our learning outcome for this presentation or for this session is that at the end of this, we appreciate OBE as an approach to designing instruction. What is OBE? According to Professor Ronald Harden, who is one of the educators known to study and write about OBE, it is an educational approach that is easy to conceptualize but very difficult to define. Nevertheless, one of the definitions of OBE is that it is an approach to education 
in which decisions about the curriculum are driven by outcomes that the student should display by the end of the course. What are outcomes? Outcomes are what learners can do or perform with what they know and have learned. They are tangible application of what has been learned by the students. They are actions and performances that embody and reflect the learner's competence in using content, information, ideas, and tools successfully. That is why OBE is considered as a performance-based approach. OBE also places emphasis on the product rather than the educational process. For OBE, product defines the process. That is why it is also known to be a results-oriented thinking. And when compared with input-based education, which is the traditional approach, the traditional approach puts emphasis on the educational process and whatever the product is or whatever the result is, we accept that. With results-oriented thinking, the outcomes agreed for the curriculum guide what is to be taught and what is to be assessed. Now, I've mentioned this before in one of our earlier workshops. And if we go back to the beginning of this presentation, we will see that there is a very thin line between outcome-based education and competency-based education. So what is the difference now between outcome and competency? Competency refers to the set of knowledge, skills, and professional behavior needed to demonstrate practice while outcome is the broad aspects of behavior transferable to a wide range of work settings. In terms of scope, outcomes are broader, wider, and more in-depth. The key word here is transferability. Outcomes are transferable. It can be applied in various contexts and in different settings. Outcomes are what learners can actually do with what they know and have learned, what they can actually perform with the set of KSA or the knowledge, skills, and attitudes they have. They are, again, tangible application of what has been learned in terms of KSA. Going back to OBE, OBE serves two purposes. The first one, or its main purpose, is to ensure that all students are equipped with the knowledge, competence, and qualities needed to be successful after they exit the educational system. And the second purpose is the structuring and operating schools so that those outcomes can be achieved and maximized for all students. So OBE does not only look at the students, but it also looks at how the school operates in order to accomplish its prime obligation, uh, referring to the first purpose. Underlying this purpose is the OBE philosophy, which is success for all, not just for the students, but for the school teachers and staff as well. OBE also has three premises that serve as a rationale on which the actual implementation of OBE ultimately rests. The first premise is that all students can learn and succeed but not on the same day in the same way. So this first premise takes into account the differences between and among learners, their characteristics, their learning styles, learning rate, or how fast or slow they learn, um, and many others. OBE recognizes that these differences are not barriers to successful learning, but must be considered as factors that should be taken into consideration when designing instruction. The second premise of OBE 
is that successful learning promotes even more successful learning. OBE stresses that successful learning rests on the students having a strong cognitive and psychological foundation of their prior learning. And the third and last premise is that schools control the conditions that directly affect successful school learning. Schools who implement outcome-based education believe they are capable of changing how they operate to allow and encourage all students to be successful learners. Aside from the three premises, there are four principles that guide OBE implementation and provide rationale why we use OBE as an educational approach. The first principle is clarity of focus. With the outcomes as the basis of this approach, all elements of the curriculum, including the instructional delivery, the learning activities, the assessment design, and even the instructional resources should be geared to what we want the students to demonstrate at the end. Defining the outcomes first help us select the most appropriate strategy to use. The outcomes will also help us determine how we are going to assess the students and what are we going to look for during the evaluation. Defining the outcomes first, then aligning the rest of the instruction to these outcomes clarifies what to focus on in the curriculum. As long as we have the outcomes, it's clear where we want to go. The second principle is expanded opportunity which means expanding the ways and number of times the students get a chance to learn and demonstrate at a very high level whatever they are ultimately expected to learn. Remember that one of the premises of OBE is that students learn differently from each other and so as course designers using OBE as our approach, more opportunities and adequate time should be provided to the learners for repeated practice and performance. That is why in OBE, there are varied strategies that can be used to deliver a particular content and to assess students' performance as long as they are aligned with the learning outcomes. The third principle is high expectations. In OBE, we get rid of all the bell curve. There is a standard that must be met so that the outcomes will be achieved. Because these outcomes tell us where we want to go, because they tell us what we want from the students and what they should be able to do at the end of the instruction, then there should be standards and criteria that must be set and met. OBE uses the Criterion Reference Grading System which means that we assess the students against a level of performance and not against another student, which is the norm reference grading system. So OBE, criterion reference. This is also why we use grading rubrics in OBE because the rubrics define the criteria that must be met. And the last principle of OBE is design down, which means designing the curriculum back from where we want the students to end up. Outcomes are goals. Again, they tell us where we want to go. So that's the goal, that's the end. And then from there, we design backwards and determine the other elements of instruction. CMO 18 only defines the program outcome. So that should be the end goal of the student's medical training. From the program outcomes, we design down and go backwards to determine what will be taught in year level 1, in year level 2, and so on and so forth. That is designing down. So remember that OBE is results-oriented. So we start from where we want our students to end up and then design down. These four OBE power principles influence all aspects of an educational system's decision-making and operations. So what are we referring to? This is the OBE system's framework by SPAVI, 
in 1994. It represents two systems combined into one, the operational system and support system. Operational system refers to the curriculum and instructional elements that relate directly to the teaching and learning process, while the support system refers to the administrative, logic, logistical, and resource components that enable the teaching and learning process to exist and function. There are four key structures that make the operational system. First, the standards and accountability or credentialing structure. This determines how achievement and performance standards are defined and how graduation credit is awarded. So it includes assessment, grading, transcripts, credits, and diplomas. The second structure is the curriculum content and articulation structure which determines how the system's formal learning experiences for students are defined, organized, and linked. It includes programs, the courses of study, and subject areas. The third is the instructional process and technology structure, which determines what tools and techniques the system uses to engage students in learning the curriculum. It includes the organization of instruction and the technologies for carrying it out. And the last one is the eligibility, promotion, and assignment structure, which determines which students will work with which teachers and students on what, when, and under which physical arrangements. This includes everything related to students' grouping, scheduling, placement, promotion, and advancement through the curriculum. Now, the support system has four broad functions. Direction setting, program designing, delivery of instruction, and documentation of results. These four functions are supported and guided by the four OBE power principles. Clarity of focus helps set the direction from the standards and criteria to the formal learning experiences that should be designed for the students to meet the defined standards. Expanded opportunity guides how the instruction should be delivered. High expectations support the documentation of results that links assessment to the criteria and standards. And design down guides the process of designing the formal learning experiences of the students. At the center of this framework are the culminating outcomes. So as we can see from this framework, the outcomes dictates the four operational structures and four operational functions of an education system. In a fully developed outcome-based system, all of these structures and functions are based on the four OBE principles and most importantly, on the culminating outcomes. I keep mentioning how outcomes influence all the decisions we have to make when designing instruction. This is to ensure that all of the elements of a curriculum or instruction are also aligned with each other. This principle now is what we refer to as constructive alignment. Constructive alignment is the alignment of all elements of instructional design from the outcomes and the content teaching learning activities and strategies up to the assessment method. This systems framework, this OBE systems framework, also ensures quality assurance. Quality assurance is not merely defining the standards against which to measure or control quality, but ensuring that there are mechanisms, procedures, and processes in place to achieve the desired quality. Inherent in OBE is monitoring and evaluation, which is essential to quality assurance. 
how do we do OBE or how do we use OBE in practice? How do we use OBE when designing instructions? So the first step is to define the outcomes because again, outcomes provide clarity of focus uh, and it dictates all decisions that must be made about the curriculum. Second, design the curriculum based on the outcomes defined. Third is to deliver the instruction. Fourth is to document results. And lastly, determine advancement. You will see in the succeeding session or succeeding presentation that this OBE practice is in line with the steps in creating instructional design. In summary, OBE is a performance-based results-oriented educational approach that ensures all students are equipped with the competence and qualities needed to be successful after they exit the educational system. It also looks at how the school operates in order to accomplish this because the OBE philosophy believes in success for all students and staff. This OBE philosophy is supported by its three premises, taking into account the differences among the learners, the importance of prior learning, and the role of the schools in successful learning. Lastly, OBE has four principles, namely clarity of focus, expanded opportunity, high expectations, and design down. I will end here and you may now proceed to the next presentation. Thank you.